Welcome back to Davis Media Access. Thanks for tuning in to The City Considers. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, your host today. And with me are Davis Mayor Brett Lee and Mayor Pro Tem Gloria Partita. We're having a conversation about homelessness and a proposal for a homeless respite center uh, here in Davis. So welcome, Brett and Gloria. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks for coming back. So. Homelessness is an, is an issue everywhere, and it's an issue, a growing issue, and growing concern in, in our community. And I know that the city and the community have both adopted various projects and strategies to you know, sort of address homelessness and try to help people. Um, Let's talk about a few of those from the city's perspective. From the community, we have, you know, the community comes together on the interfaith uh, rotating winter shelter and the, the H Street facility and things like that. But uh, the city's been doing some other things. And then we'll get to the proposal for the respite center. Sure. So um, one of the things that's, that I've been aware of is I've seen people downtown uh, sweeping the sidewalks mm -hmm. and doing, and I believe that's through Pathways to Employment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's chat just briefly about that and let people know what that's about. Yeah, so Pathways to, Gloria can you know, add in here, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. Uh, pathways to Employment is a, a program where we pay some folks who uh, otherwise would not have some level of employment and we get them to do uh, sweeping, tidying up, things like that. And the idea is that they're sort of regaining job skills so that mm -hmm. ultimately they can go on and find other types of work. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a small amount of funding, uh, but you know, we, we're hoping that it actually leads to employment for uh, a good, group, in a group, good right. group of people. And importantly, I think that it is part of a broader program called Pathways. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Pathways has a lot of different components to it, which are, I think some of them uh, come from the county, you know, are supported by the county, mm -hmm. but um, it, it includes uh, Ryan Collins, mm -hmm. who is, you know, our outreach through the police department. Right. And so it's really important to be comprehensive when you're, when you're trying to address the homeless uh, situation. And, and so Pathways to Employment is, is one component of that Pathways um, program. Right. And the Davis Enterprise did a really nice write-up on Ryan's work mm -hmm. um, recently. And one of the things they pointed out is, is that for the homeless population, if you have other issues going on, if you have mental illness or you're on the LGBTQI spectrum or you're, you know, you can get even more lost in, in the system. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that that one-to-one -one contact that, that he's provided has been really helpful. And yet, we still have unmet need, and which sure. is where this proposal for a respite center comes in. So what is the proposal exactly? So the proposal's evolving slightly, uh, but the general idea was there were, uh, so I'll just sort of tell you where the idea came from. Sure. I was, you know, we have, uh, we have a, a lot, several sort of pieces came together. You just can't help but notice that there are some people sort of camping out mm -hmm. kind of in the rough under some trees okay. or along the outskirts of uh, the city of Davis in various sort of areas. We have a lot of neighbors who are complaining about, you know, the homeless camps. So for them, they see the trash, they see sort of people kind of living in, you know, under some trees and they write to complain to us. Mm -hmm. So we're aware of the issue. Perhaps I would say we view it slightly differently. Um, and then we also have folks, uh, shopkeepers downtown are writing to us and we also see it firsthand where you have homeless people sleeping in front of storefronts and it's creating a challenge for the shopkeepers when they get up to go open up their stores in the morning sure. and there's sort of people and there's sort of trash and there, so these things sort of came together along with the fact that we had some pretty serious uh, heavy rains out there um, this past winter. And you think, gosh, here are these people getting rained on for three or four days straight. Yeah. Certainly, as a community, we can do better. But that is, that's not to dismiss sort of the neighbors' concerns about sort of the, the trash and all these other sorts right. of aspects about sort of people sort of camping in random places. And so the idea with the respite center was twofold. It was to provide some well-defined overnight sort of camping space 
uh, which would be monitored by the city, but it was also to provide some daytime amenities so that people could come and do their laundry, take a hot shower, uh, come out of the cold and the rain and mm -hmm. things like that. And one of the interesting things and you know, really important things that the Interfaith Rotating Shelter does is it provides a place for people to spend the night. But during the day, they leave the churches that are the hosts. Mm -hmm. And they're often dropped off on the outside of downtown. Mm -hmm. And the people have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Later that evening, they can go back and have their shelter at the, the church. Yeah. But during the day, they're sort of, you know, here you go, see you in 12 hours. Yeah. In some cases, people do like to go hang out downtown. But I would guess in many cases, people would just prefer a nice, safe place for the, uh, to go and sit where it's, you know, heated in the winter mm -hmm. and air conditioned in the summer, where they could watch TV or read a book. Uh, and also a place where they could learn about the different benefits that they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. A good proportion of the people are actually entitled to benefits but because of the sort of the nomadic you know, life that they're, they're mm -hmm. leading, it's hard for them to sign up and actually receive benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan mm -hmm. Collins has been a really big help for the city in that Ryan is that outreach person who actually talks to the homeless folks and helps try to connect them to different resources that might be available. Mm -hmm. And the idea with the respite center, in terms of the daytime component, it's a place for people to go and not feel like they have to look over their shoulder in terms of having to move along, but where they can just go and spend the day. And then and also where they can go and find out about the services. Mm -hmm. Connect and, to the social and services. And perhaps, mm -hmm. yeah. um, this is a little disjointed in how I'm telling it, but the county is also interested in helping with these folks. So the county has talked about coming over and providing some resources to help people sign up for the benefits they're able, uh, okay. they're eligible for. Great, a big um, problem in getting services out to people when they are transient is that you, you can't get those services to them and the services are really important to get to them. Yeah. And I think that it's also really important in the relationship that the community has with people who are living in our community because they are our citizens. They are people mm -hmm. who are living in our community. Uh, they're also Davisites like everyone else. Is that you have you begin to ha uh, have friction and conflict because the shopkeepers or the people who are shopping downtown mm -hmm. uh, or living next door to someone who's camping a block away is that then you begin to develop this us and them mentality. Sure. And that is not just from, I think, the citizens. It's also from the people who are uh, unhoused. They feel like they are not in relationship with the people, it, with the place that they're living. And I think if you did have a more structure around how people are interacting with each other, it would alleviate a a lot of that friction and it would make yeah. us a better community. There's the structure aspect, there's also the humane aspect. I mean, I'm aware that in very hot weather last summer, for example, the city opens cooling centers and I, I, I expect right. it's for that reason and for people who you know maybe live in a place that doesn't have air conditioning, that kind of thing, where people can be safe and they can be treated as humans, as right. you know, fellow mm -hmm. citizens, as Gloria said. So this, to some degree, would be an extension of that effort, but making it a, a more year-round. So where might it be located? And I imagine all of this is under discussion still, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. how would it be financed? So uh, the council took up the discussion of this in a general concept way, and the council sort of said they liked the idea, and the ask was really, give us an initial sort of budget amount, mm -hmm. just as a ballpark figure, and then can we have permission to look at city-owned sites? And so the initial budget is targeted at $80,000, okay. and we do have sort of council uh, support for the idea of looking at some city sites where there might be some capacity. One important thing about the respite center is it's meant to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be a pilot, and so the duration is meant to be for under one year. Okay. We're trying to prove the concept that this will be of benefit, that it can be done relatively inexpensively, 
that the community will view it positively. So we talk about the people who are upset about the legal camping mm -hmm. around the perimeter and the trash. Sure, and the impact on so, the downtown. So and, that should mm -hmm. be reduced in terms of that impact, in terms of the downtown shops, instead of people sort of just milling around with nowhere to go. Uh, a lot of them probably will choose to go to this respite center, but we prove the concept and then we can hand it off to a nonprofit or various other entities to run. But I think it's important to take that first step because there have been several groups and there are currently several groups that are trying to do something, but they've been working on these ideas for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the important pieces about the respite center is we want to have this up and running in months, mm -hmm. not years. Mm -hmm. But it's meant to be a short duration, prove the concept, show that it can work, and then hand it off. Um, but the council recently, so rather than getting too far ahead of the council, it was important that we brought the brought the idea back and sort of made sure that all five of mm -hmm. us were comfortable with the direction we were heading. And so long round way about way of answering your question, yeah. the idea is a city parcel to be determined mm -hmm. and then a rough level of budget. And um, so <laughs> we're expecting to have a proposal back before the council in about a month mm -hmm. with some sites identified as possibilities. So right now it's at the staff level and they're working through the right. details. Yes. They're working okay. through the details. And there are other pots of money that are out there if you know if if we do have to absolutely, you know, go above the eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollar uh, initial but we are really trying to, to you know keep it there. But sure. it's also good to I think do that outreach to other entities because it is a community um, issue and, it, and yeah. it should be addressed that way. And I also I think it's really important that timeliness is important because you can talk about something forever and and it, it is it's challenging to get things to come to fruition but um, I think unless you have someone who says you know make this happen within a certain amount of time that um, the things tend to drag. I read an article recently uh, where Long Beach decided that they were going to do a count of homeless people and they mm -hmm. were going to do it in 48 hours and they and they managed that. They, they counted I think 700 people and then set a timeline that they were going to have something up and running, that they were going to have so many beds. Um, I think it was in a month? Do you remember I, this? It was it was it was amazing. Hmm. It was amazing that um, they said these are the parameters. This is what we're gonna. This is what our goal is, right. and it they did it. And so I think that unless you absolutely set goals, um, you, you you know you can you can kind of sure you know sure. And we have you know many. We have such a, a good base in this community between organizations like Davis Community Meals and Steak and the Food Bank and all the, the, the whole faith community. But I, I think the reason things take st time, and I'm speaking from the experience of running a small nonprofit, is we're strapped for cash and yep. resources. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, city push may be just the, yep. the thing to head it in that direction and pilot it. So we're down to just a couple of minutes to wrap this up. Um, yep. Any any uh, two things, any obstacles that, that you're concerned about, and um, where can people get more info? I assume the city web page, but. Yeah, the city uh, we'll have some information okay. once we have the next council meeting where we're discussing that. Right. So I guess a, a couple things. So imagine I said we're going to look to house maybe 10 to 15 people. Right. The natural response for the people who are involved in this area is like, well, that's too few. We mm -hmm. need, we need you know, 40 or 50. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about it is we're trying to do something sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And this is not intended to cure or you know, solve the homelessness right. issue. Homeless, the, ho the homelessness challenge is multifaceted and there's not one solution. Yeah. And so we have a lot of good nonprofits doing a lot of work. This is meant to just address a piece of, of the, the puzzle. And, and it's a pilot. And, and it is a yeah. pilot. One of the things in terms of challenges is imagine that I said there's going to be you know, 40 or 50 people living on this site. Understandably, neighbors would be concerned. They would be, 
wow, I'm not sure that's going to be good. I'm worried about the safety and you know, what about crime? What about all these, you know, all these unknowns? And yeah. sometimes when we're confronted with an unknown, we assume the worst. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important from the pilot perspective is to show that this type of thing can be well run and that neighbors should feel comfortable with it and recognize that it actually makes the situation better. So we have to prove to the community that it can be done. Mm -hmm. And then in the future, we'll be given more latitude in terms of the size and scope. Uh, but initially, it's going to be relatively small because we want to get it up and running, and we don't want to create a lot of anxiety in the mm -hmm. community. Sure. So I would say that would be one that's big challenge. That's probably the biggest. That's the biggest Fear challenge. Fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. Not right. knowing what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. And, and people um, thinking, yeah, that's a great idea. Not on my side. Of Not me. in my backyard. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. OK. Well, there, there's actually, uh, I don't know whether we have time. You may have been reading about all these other communities that are moving pretty rapidly on sort yeah. of these organized camping. Recently, the Ninth, Ninth Circuit Court came out with this ruling, which right. basically says if somebody's camping on public property, you can't require them to move unless you can tell them where they can move to. Right. And this is a dramatic change. Before it'd be, oh, you're illegally camping, you have to get out of here. Mm -hmm that is not allowed anymore. If you want to say, you can't camp here, we have to be able to tell them where they can move to. So it's really going to behoove communities to have some kind of organized yes. effort along mm -hmm. these lines. Yeah, we, we want to yeah. be proactive yeah. because uh, I think it'll be fairly chaotic okay. if we don't start taking some steps to right. have mm -hmm. an organized mm -hmm. program in place. Well, I really look forward to hearing what happens with this, and I'll, you know, I'll be watching the, the council meetings to see what's going on there, and um, I hope that uh, we'll be able to have you back and, and talk about it maybe six months in yeah. and see how the pilot is going. Mm -hmm. Any last thoughts? Uh, no, I think, that, okay. I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you both for oh, your well. time today mm -hmm. and for always making time to come into Davis Media Access. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Sure. Always fun. Yeah. And thank you for tuning in. You can catch an archive of all the City Consider shows online at dctv.davismedia.org. And we also have a YouTube channel under Davis Media Access, and we funnel things that way, too. So check it out. Thanks for tuning in.